Hello and welcome back to the OSM channel. Perhaps one of my favorite components about this homemade shop that I put together here is my bolt and fastener organization system. Now, bolts and fasteners are absolutely critical. Without them, our tools, our machinery, our infrastructure, everything quite literally would fall to pieces. Therefore, I find it pretty much necessary that every shop, small and large, have a reasonably large selection of fasteners at any given point in time. Now, I, I know what you're saying, well that's not really practical for most of us because for most of us to go and purchase a large bolt bin and stock all these fasteners is going to cost upwards of maybe a thousand dollars. Now I never went that route. Here's the route I went. Every time I went to a garage sale, I'd look for an old man's bolt bin and I'd pick it up for almost nothing. Anytime I took something apart, I would take the bolts and save them, put them in my bolt bin over there. So just throughout the years, I collected screws, bolts, and fasteners. And then when I had a stressful day, I just came in the garage and I started organizing those fasteners. And in a moment here, I'll show you all my bolt bins and how much I've collected over the years. So it is possible to collect everything without paying for it. You just have to be patient and you have to have an eye for it. Now in the past, I've been scolded for that a little bit. A lot of people have said, well, that's a waste of time. Why would you do all that when you could go out to the store and uh, just buy the fasteners that you need when you need them? Well, I do understand that argument too, right? Like time's valuable, I completely understand that. But on the flip side of things, this didn't cost me a dime for the most part. I mean, I have had to restock a few items, but for the most part, this really hasn't cost me much. But here's how I look at it. Quite oftentimes, I'll be repairing an engine or a piece of machinery, and it'll be at a strange hour, right? Like say it's 10 o'clock on Christmas Eve, and I really need my snowblower to get fixed and I need this very specific fastener. All the stores are closed, and even if the stores are open, there's a good chance that my local hardware store won't have the fastener that I need. So, by me having a reasonably large selection of fasteners, 95% of the time it seems like I'm able to locate an appropriate fastener and repair the piece of machinery that I need to repair. So I think you understand my argument here. Now what I would like to move on to is, how do I actually organize it all? Because taking a mess like this and creating something organized and neat and something that's easy to access what you're looking for can be somewhat challenging, but I'll show you my method now. So my bolt organization system has three components. This is component number one and perhaps the most critical. So this is called the thread checker. I will leave a link for this in the description down below, but what does this device do? Well, it does as its name implies. It gives you the ability to check the diameter and pitch of any fastener nut or threaded opening. So say for example, I wanted to check the size of this bolt right here. The black side is metric, the silver side is SAE. So the first thing I would do, look at the diameter of the fastener and I would take these thread checking devices and I would look for one that matches the diameter. Like this looks like a good match right here. The next thing I would do is take the threads of the fastener and line it up with the fastener uh, threads on the male side of the thread checker. And this does look like a good match. So the final thing I would do flip the thread checker around to the female side, and then I would thread the bolt in just to confirm that I have the right uh, measuring device selected. I have confirmed that this is a good fit, so now I know that this is an M10 by 1.5 bolt. Let's do another fastener. So there's carriage bolt right here. I have not pre-measured, so I have no idea what the size of this one is. So I'll start with the SAE size. So first things first, I'll look for a diameter that matches. This diameter matches. We'll align the threads, see if they jive. They do jive very well. 3 8 16 pitch. Now I'll thread this in here just to confirm. And that thread's in there very smoothly. So I have confirmed that this carriage bolt is 3 8 16 pitch bolt. So now that we have our bolts and nuts sized, we can move on to component number two. Now component number two is that you need to have some type of bin, tray, or organization system, a way in which you can quickly and effortlessly access the specific fastener size you need when you need it. Now when I was first starting out, this is what I use. These are just cheap Walmart sandwich containers. As you can see, I just took a piece of duct tape, a black Sharpie, and I'd label what size fasteners I had in that sandwich container. And it wasn't pretty. I mean, there's a wide variety of fasteners in here. We have carriage bolts, regular bolts, washers, lock washers, nylock nuts, but you get the idea. It allowed me to easily access the half inch fasteners when I needed them, although I had to sort through everything a little bit. 
But as my financial status improved and as I was able to kind of build up this shop a little bit further, I found a good deal on this Bolt Organization bin system. And this has been absolutely one of my uh, more favorite recent additions to the shop. So I found this on Facebook Marketplace. I think I paid around $200 for it down in Long Island. Uh, but this goes for like five or $600 plus taxes and shipping nowadays. So if you can pick one of these up cheap somewhere online, really worth the investment. Now I also do have a tray organizer, which I'll show you that in a moment here, but I just kind of quickly want to go over this. So I have the eight main SAE bolts sizes that you would find in America, uh, all organized right here from here down. So we have quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths, seven sixteenths, half inch, nine sixteenths, five eighths, and three quarter. This shelf right here, this is all nuts, washers, uh, lock washers, nylock nuts, things of that nature. And then the bolts are organized based on length. So these are shorter bolts and these are longer bolts. So if I wanted a half inch by four inch bolt, here's one right here. Here's half inch, inch and a half bolts in the back here. So you kind of get the idea. And from here up, uh, these are mainly screws, these two shelves. So like number 12 self tap screws, wood framing screws, uh, exterior screws, structural screws, drywall screws, two inch fine screws. And I have other length drywall screws and moving up cement board screws, brad nails, welding consumables, fence staples. And then kind of from here up, it's, it's more miscellaneous. So uh, we have hose clamps, plumber's tape, hacksaw blades, Velcro, interior anchors, rivets, bearings. So that's a quick look as to how my bolt bins organized. And I got to tell you, it's so nice to be able to think of a specific thing you're looking for. Just come over to this bin and access it. Like I need rivets. Here they are. Let's go to work. Having a system like that just allows the shop to be so much more efficient. So I'll give you a quick look at my slide tray bin here. And this bin is great for small miscellaneous hardware. So I'll run down the line here, small taps and dies, keyways, key rings, staples, picture frame hooks, cotter pins, hitch safety pins, toggle switches. And then I use these bins down here all the time, especially this row of bins right here. So this, these bins right here are for smaller hardware. On the left is mainly metric, so I have M4 through M10. And then on the right here, this is SAE, so I have number six through number 10. And then I also have some quarter inch hardware here as well, specialized hardware, so like quarter inch screws, quarter inch eye, eye bolts, things of that nature. These bins have saved my butt a many a times. For example, this past fall, my neighbor brought over his leaf vac and the bolt that holds the carburetor housing onto the engine had rattled out and disappeared. So I was able to use the thread checker. I determined that it was a metric bolt. Came over to my metric bin over here. It was an M6 by one. I found a fastener that worked and I got him on his way in a couple of minutes. If I had to run out to the store, it could have taken me potentially an hour or two to run out, grab that fastener, and then come back here and put it all together. So again, by having a bolt organization system it may seem like a lot of work but it will save you a lot of time in the future. It's like an investment. Now let's move on to component number three. Component number three is labeling. What good is it to sort through all your fasteners if you can't read what you wrote on the label? Now, of course, when I was starting out, you know, just use this yellow tape, a black Sharpie, and I'd label all my bins. But about a year ago now, I got this P-Touch label maker, and this thing has been absolutely fantastic. If you couldn't tell, I'm a little bit OCD. I like to have things clean, neat, and organized. The wonderful thing about this label maker too is you can make different size labels. So these are standard size labels and this is what I have on my large bolt bins. But for my smaller drawer slides right here, I decrease the font size and then I just cut the labels down to only display the smaller uh, label. And this has been working out absolutely fantastic. It's clean, it's legible, easy to see. But another thing I really like about the label maker as opposed to my traditional method is now I can look through the clear plastic part of these drawer slides and see what's actually in the bin. Not only reading the label, but being able to look in the bin and see what's in there is also very helpful. And with that, I would like to conclude this video. I think I made my points pretty clear here, but what I would really like to know is how do you organize your hardware? How does your system differentiate from my system? Please let me know in the comments section down below. As always, I will catch you on the next one.